welcome back to the Gilly Custom Channel. Why are you standing there looking <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in again. If you watched our last video, you saw us uh, hooking up the off-grid system for the house, the solar power stuff. Well, this here is the mill shed, which we built back in, what was it, episode three? I think it was, something like that. Oh, wow. Anyways, <laughs> this is already off-grid. It's been off-grid for a while, but I've been having some issues. So, now with the house, I bought the solar kit from Ozark Mountain Off-Grid. That was a smart thing to do. Um, when we built this, I got a cheapo, you know, cheapo inverter, cheapo batteries, cheapo system, and uh, not as great. Um, the, uh, I guess, it, it overcharges the batteries. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't stop charging them when it should. So I've been having these issues of it, you know, it, it freaks out, alarm goes on, batteries are overcharging, and then it'll shut itself off, which is a good thing it shuts itself off, because what would happen if it didn't shut itself off? Kaboom. Kaboom. <laughs> Kaboom. Yeah. So what we're going to do today, we got this little thing. Um, it's like a, what, transfer switch type thingamabobber. Basically, it's going to make, it's going to sense the voltage of the batteries, and when it goes too high it's going to power an outlet that we're going to have someone plug it into. It's a load dump. So we're going to make a load dump for our small off-grid setup here. Um, so this little thing, it, it should work. It should work, I think. Um, also, we're going to show you some a cool new toy we got. We got this awesome uh, new voltmeter, contactless voltmeter. Pretty great. So we're going to show you all about that. Um, Ethan here. It's kind of a whiz with the whole uh, electronics stuff. He's uh, <laughs> so he's gonna he's gonna help with this. So check it out. So up here we got our uh, off-grid solar array, and we can see that we are right now under zero percent load. We're getting fifty-three point two volts. That's what the whole system's at right now. That's uh including all these batteries. Today, to uh, detect the uh, amperages, I'm gonna be using this uh, Tessman, uh, what does it say, clamp meter? Oh. I'm gonna be using this, and uh, in here we got a user manual. And uh, we got our meter. And here we go. Now this is, without the, uh, jumper cables that are in here i won't be able to test voltages because what this is doing this is measuring the magnetic field around the wire and that gets a rough estimation of the amperage it's not going to get exact to... oh it lights up oh that's cool oh we even get a flashlight with it very cool there we go Looks like we're getting a little over one amp. So here I got my battery supply wired up to the positive. I know it's white, which is usually neutral and AC. This is a DC circuit, which means white usually means signal. Uh, I didn't have any spare red wire. So white right now is meaning uh, power. It's tied into the red wire here. And then we've got the two grounds tied together. Um, that's going down there. We're gonna set up the low dump. Now that I've got them in their plug, let's get a more uh, accurate measurement. Ah, that's more what I'm looking for. Next up, we got this guy, which I'm going to wire um, in so that I can just plug it into this outlet, which is already pulling from the inverter. Now I'm going to run a line from that into our inverter here. That's going to supply us our power. And then we're going to have output here. That output is going to go to this outlet. This is what's going to dump. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set here. I'm going to set our uh, recovery set point down to... We're going to go 52. It'll probably be right at uh, 13. So 13. Uh, or no, not our recovery. Our low voltage. I'll set to 13. So pretty high. Uh, and then our recovery. Um, if I'm going... Uh, to 56, it'll probably be 14. So yeah, 14. And that way, when the power uh, reaches 14, it'll 
turn the battery system back on because it's at the recovery. It'll drain it until it reaches 13, and then it'll shut off until it gets all the way back up there. That way we can kind of keep the voltage in check. All right, so as before, we have our thing wired. We have this at the ready here. Let's plug this bad boy on in. And flip her on. Oh, I heard that big relay in there. Looks like our DC is going, or our DC AC, the uh, inverter, is going to power our source. So it's working. Sweet. Oh, look at this wiry mess. <laughs> now it's a mess for now, but we'll clean it up. Looks safe, doesn't it? I'm going to specify here that this is all for a uh, temporary situation. We're not uh, we're not going to be leaving this on when we're gone. This is only going to stay on when I'm around to keep an eye on it. That load dump is basically going to be used with a uh, either I got a dehumidifier here, I got the window AC unit, and then for when I am around and when it's cold, the heat the space heater. Again, I'm not going to leave that on when I'm gone because that's just stupid. Uh, but uh, yeah, a load dump to do whatever we need it to do to use up that extra voltage because why not, right? All right, so Ethan's worked his magic here. Uh, again, it looks like a mess for now. We're gonna clean up the wires once we've tested it. But basically, we got a, a trash laying around is what we got. <laughs> we got a regular outlet, it's just one of the outlets powered by the inverter. Um, that's bringing the power into this box. Then coming out of this box, we have this outlet. And then we have this wire that goes up to the batteries that's gonna sense the voltage of the batteries. Now we have it set up so that if the battery voltage is above a certain amount, it's gonna power up this outlet. So that's where we'll plug in our dehumidifier, AC unit, space heater, whatever. And, uh, yeah, that's what's gonna do it. So, um, yeah, there's our load dump. Now let's neaten all this up, maybe staple up some wires, mount it on the wall, and make it pretty. Mm -hmm. check some stuff hey once again Ethan showed you this but um this Tessman uh, multimeter it's a clamp meter so uh, it can do that uh, thing where it measures the amperage without even touching it without having to use these guys Ethan can tell you better Ethan what how does this work exactly so the way that this clamp works it can't measure any sort of voltage however it can measure the amperage via these and what it's doing is it's measuring the electrical flux that is the change in the magnetic field around the wire. So what's happening, as current flows in one direction, you can use the right hand rule, your thumb points in the direction of the current, and you curl your fingers, that's the direction of the magnetic field. Oh, kind of like righty tighty lefty loosey type thing, right? Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> so, but AC is alternating current. That means it's a push and pull. The electricity goes one way, and then it pulls back the other direction. Right. So. Uh, what's happening in the wire is you have it going this way and the magnetic field is going around that way. And then as it pulls back, the magnetic field goes in the reverse direction. Now, why is that important? With a DC current, you can stick this on there on both of them and get a reading in amperage mm -hmm. because it's staying there. Whereas when you have an AC current, if you try to measure the whole wire like this, you're not going to read anything. Yeah, it says zero right now. <laughs> because uh, what's happening is they're interfering with each other and destroying the magnetic fields. Because you have one going this way and one going that way. So it's way. canceling it out. It's canceling it yeah, out. Yeah. So you take this and you wrap it around just one of the wires and then you'll get your reading. 
but All this right. can't measure voltage. You got to use physical contact pins to measure uh, voltage. And this is reading right now 52.4 volts. So if I switch this to a DC voltage meter and I uh, touch the contacts right here. This is reading 52.9. Okay. So there's some discrepancy between them, but that's well within... Uh, just well it needs within. a little little calibration? <laughs> yeah, just a little. All right. Oh, that's not too hard, right? Nope. All right. So we got this thing. What we did here, what is it? There's a, uh, a low temp or temperature, low voltage and a high voltage, right? Or a low, there's a low voltage and a recovery voltage, right? Yeah. So what happens is... We hit that low voltage, that signals box, hey, battery's getting low, let's turn this off. And it turns it off. But it won't let it turn back on until it reaches a recovery voltage. That's where it's like, okay, we have enough power stored up to start using the battery again. For our specific purposes, our low voltage, we want to be right around the regular operating voltage. Recovery voltage is when it starts getting a bit high. Any further, it'd start getting dangerous. So right when it reaches that high, we wanted to dump that power into something to bring it back down to operating. All right, so our high voltage, or rather recovery voltage, we got it set at 56 volts, because if it gets any higher than that, that's no good. And then uh, recovery is, we got it set to 52. So basically, if it's above 52 volts, which it is a little bit right now, we're at 52.4, you see that? Uh, uh, Yep, there it is. Um, so that's going to, theoretically, if I plug something into this outlet now, it's going to turn on. And then once it gets below 52, it's going to shut back off. And then if it gets above 56 again, it'll turn back on again, and so on. Yes. Right, okay. Just making sure I got it. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We're going to use this stupid little space heater as a testing dummy. And it's on. Oh, and it immediately shut off. <laughs> it pulled a lot of uh, power all of a sudden, and it went below that low voltage, so it shut itself off. Um, there's not a whole lot of sun out right now, so it's not likely to get to 56 anytime soon. Um, but when it does, it'll turn this thing on again and then shut it back off when it gets to 52. Um, for the sake of testing purposes, though, I'm thinking we set that low voltage a little lower, like 50, maybe. Okay. Let's do that. Oh, I like this guy. So, you're going to need to power cycle it, because right now it's in battery recovery mode. So, it's not True. actually going to work until, oh, it, until it gets high. Yeah, until it reaches the uh, recovery voltage. Aha. Uh -huh. What do we say? We just hold this down? Yep, hold it for three seconds, and it should go back to... There it goes. Oh, it did turn back on. So when you change the settings, it uh, it did power cycle it anyway. Okay. All right. Space heater's on. Down to 51.1, 51 volts. There it goes. And, uh... Space heater's on, so it's going to be getting pretty warm in here. I don't know how long that'll last before it gets below. Oh, yeah, it's trickling down. It is this uh, this electrical system in here is not a huge system. I mean, it's really just meant to power the essentials in this shed. Um, so you know, not a whole lot of battery power, not a whole lot of panels on the roof. It's a small system, and as we all know, a a uh, space heater pulls tons of power so it shouldn't take too long but we'll let it we'll just leave it alone and let it let it shut itself off in the meantime how about this thing what do you think Ethan of all the uh, different multimeters you've used I said this one's pretty handy pretty Let's handy see what our uh, amperage draws at right now well, the space heater is drawing about 12 and a half amps 12 and a half amps that's so I, that's about normal isn't it 110 mm -hmm. volts and we're at uh, 1500 watts that's right where we up. want to be it adds up cool all right so get yourself one of these you'd ever do any electrical work or even just to have around the house it's a tessman clamp meter they got uh what's what's the name 
Where's the box? Where'd you throw the box, Ethan? Where'd you throw um, the Where'd you throw the instruction manual? I know he 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 threw the instruction manual, didn't he? Didn't happen. I don't know where it went. It flew away. What do you, what do you call this, Ethan? The instruction manual. I told you it flew away. I didn't do anything about it. See, Ethan already knows uh, every user manual to every tool uh, by heart, so he doesn't need it. But um, it's like a freaking novel. I mean, it's got all this info in it. This thing has all kinds of different functions. It's pretty sweet. Um, anything from you know volts and amps and ohms, like anything would have, even temperature, all that good stuff. It's got the probes, and then it's got the clamp function, which is pretty sweet. So that clamp function actually is great for the solar wire because you can get right around just the positive and figure out how many amps you got coming in through there. So it's it's handy. Get yourself one. I'm putting a link for this thing in the description of the video. So check that out. Get yourself one and um, then let me know how it works out for you. All right, well, how are we doing here? We're still at 50.7. It's going to be a little bit before this thing shuts off, isn't it? Mm-hmm. All right, well, we already know that it will shut off because we tried that with the uh, when we had it set at a different voltage. I'd say this thing's a success. What do you think? Load dump, operation load dump, success? All right, good work, Ethan. Good stuff. Till next time, catch you on the next one. God bless.